In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is in our midst. I wanted to offer a quick word today. Because the gospel passage we read and what I shared with the children is uh, fairly self-evident and, and, and very important. When Jesus celebrated this miracle, this multiplying of the loaves, what's interesting is he told the disciples to give them something to eat. He says, he's the, first the disciples said, send the people away because it's getting dark now and they haven't eaten all day and we're far from town. Tell them to go back home so that they can take care of their needs. And Jesus says, you give them something to eat. And they said they didn't have enough to give them anything to eat. And so we have the multiplication of the loaves. Now, what's interesting here is Jesus doesn't simply multiply the loaves and distribute the food. He multiplies the loaves, gives it to the disciples, and they're the ones who distribute the food. It's the disciples who give the food out. Jesus does the miracle. The disciples are the ones who pass out the food. This is an example of what it means to be a disciple. A disciple is not simply one who, uh, and this is part of it certainly, loves the Lord, uh, knows things about the Lord, has memorized a bunch of things about their faith. A disciple is one who follows the directions of the Lord. And the Lord's directions for us are to serve our neighbor. Now, like I told the children, the Lord makes a way for us to do that. But we still have to do it. We are the hands and the feet of God. Sometimes we turn things around. We forget what it means to be a disciple. In Paul's letter today, we heard that the disciples were arguing amongst each other. Members of the church were fighting with each other. They were getting into various controversies with each other. They were saying, they were saying, I, I really like Apollos' teaching. Some of them. Some people said, you know, I really like Peter's teaching. And some people were saying, you know, Paul is the one who introduced me to the faith. And he's really my favorite. I follow him. He's the best one. No, Apollo is. No, Peter is. And so Paul is seeing this happening in his churches. He's seeing the people arguing about this. And honestly, Paul thinks it's rather silly. This is not what the apostles, this is not what the disciples of Jesus should be focused on. Whose teacher is a better teacher? You have a teacher, the purpose of having a teacher isn't to have a better teacher than someone else. The purpose of having a teacher is for you to learn something and to take what you learned and put it into action. And so Jesus teaches us and Paul does too, and Apollos did too, and Peter did too, but teaches us to follow Jesus, to follow his teaching. In our world today, in our nation today, there is so much arguing, so much fighting, so much controversy, and it even falls into the church too. People have different opinions about different things. And our Lord is saying, do what I tell you to do. Help those who are in need. Care for the poor. Paul says, what are you doing with all these fights and all these controversies, all these arguments? Jesus says, keep your eye on the ball. Focus on the target. The target is love your neighbor. And we can become so distracted by all these uh, side discussions and arguments that we stop loving our neighbor. We stop, ser stop serving our neighbor. 
we stop caring for those who are in need. Sometimes people want to ask the question, sometimes I even ask the question, who would Jesus vote for? You know, who's, what party is Jesus in? This type of thing. But Jesus isn't in a party. He hasn't chosen any particular political party. In fact, he really is concerned with each of us that we make good decisions in our life. Whether it's voting, whether it is uh, what to do with the dollars that we receive in our life, whether it's what to do with the people around us that are uh, speaking with us and that we spend time with, what are we doing with what has been given to us? Are we prayerfully making decisions? Are we seeking the Lord in guidance? Are we loving our neighbor in all things? Are we spending our time arguing or are, are we spending our time in figuring out a way for me, not everybody else, but for me to manifest God's love through me to my neighbor. This is important. And I know it's difficult, especially with COVID-19. It's difficult to do these things. But, like the apostles said, we only have five loaves and two fish. And Jesus says, bring them to me. And he'll make a way. We have to focus on the right things. I think sometimes we like being distracted because when we are distracted by these arguments, we think we're actually accomplishing something and we're not. We don't change people's minds more often than not. We're just arguing because it makes us feel better somehow. And I don't even think it really makes you feel better. Rather than doing that, let's love our neighbor. Let's help those in need. Let's focus on what we're called to. And the other stuff will work out. The other stuff will be okay. But if we don't serve our neighbor, if we don't love our neighbor, then it won't be okay for us. It won't be okay for others. Our job is simple. Love your neighbor don't argue so much about the other stuff, but love your neighbor. This is what the Lord calls us to, and this is what active love is. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is in our midst.